right thing. That's the manual thing. Mark is done. as you prepare for worship today we have joint blessings today is Christ the King Sunday and we're entering the week of Thanksgiving where we have many opportunities to be thankful for so the music I've chosen today is a blend of Christ the King and of Thanksgiving come ye thankful people come Raise the song of harvest home, all is safely gathered in, ere the winter storms begin. God our Maker doth provide for our wants to be supplied. Come to God's own temple, come, raise the song of harvest home. All the world is God's own field, fruit unto his praise to yield. Wheat and tares together sown, unto joy or sorrow grown. First the blade and then the ear, then the full corn shall appear. Grant to harvest, Lord, that we Wholesome, great, and pure baby. Thank you very much, Linda. Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful, merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Jesus shall reign wherever the sun doth his successive journeys run. His kingdom stretch from shore to shore, till moon shall wax and wane no more. Let every creature rise and bring peculiar honors to Angels descend with songs again, and earth repeat the loud Amen. Sing together the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. 
Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Please be seated. Psalm 95, please read with me half verse. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. And raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God. And a great king above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth. And the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. And kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Reading from the epistle to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus your love toward all the saints. For this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. For above all, rule and authority and power and dominion above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, that he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to eat? And, and and when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, 
truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did nothing to welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. These will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be to God. Hail to the Lord's anointed, great David's greater son. Hail in the time appointed, his reign on earth begun. He comes to break oppression, to set the captive free, to take away transgression, and rule in equity. He shall come down like showers upon the fruitful earth, and love, joy, hope like flowers spring in his path to birth. Before him on a mountain shall peace the herald go, and righteousness in fountains from hill to valley flow. As you remain seated, let us say together the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Perhaps you, like Austin and I recently, have become absorbed by the Netflix series called The Crown. Perhaps, whether or not you've been following Netflix or The Crown, you have some curiosity about the English royal family, about the history of royalty in England, and about the long reign of Queen Elizabeth II. None of that may intrigue you at all. You may even be decidedly anti-royal, but you must admit, even if grudgingly, that there is widespread American fascination. We don't want our own royalty. We overthrew King George III. But as odd as it seems, we have a fascination with the English royal family. We watch and we discuss and we analyze, and they have given us much to consider. 
So the crown now, uh, the crown is specifically focused on Elizabeth II, and now in the fourth season, we are entering contemporary times. It gets even more gossipy. There are events portrayed that many of us would remember. Charles and Diana, Andrew and Sarah Ferguson, and less known issues such as the tragically handicapped cousins quietly housed in a nursing home, or the Queen's bitter dislike of Margaret Thatcher, or Michael Shea, the press officer, who took the fall for an article critical of Thatcher in the Times. Shea later turned novelist and published a tell-all autobiography before his premature death. Yes, it would be a soap opera, except, at least in broad detail, it happened as portrayed. Notice I said broad detail. Well, we don't simply stare at royalty. We're not simply starstruck. We want the real story. What really happened? And much of which seeps out reveals humanity, at times messy humanity. Princess Margaret's incessant drinking and smoking and apparent depression. Diana's struggle at a very young age thrown into all of this to somehow fit in. Andrew's feeling of being snubbed, even disregarded. Many clay feet, many fragile egos, many birds living in gilded cage, strapped, trapped by splendor. And it must be said through it all, genuine feelings of responsibility, though not always the clarity to know how to exercise the responsibility. Need it be said, royalty or not, they are and have been human beings. I confess to a very soft spot for Queen Elizabeth. She has had a profound sense of the British Commonwealth, a fact whether one celebrates it or not. It may be a legacy of colonialism, but there has been an elaborate network of British influence, and she has recognized that. She opposed apartheid in South Africa, for example, and though this will not make the dramatic series and only made a few church publications, after some years of absence at the last minute, a few years ago, Queen Elizabeth attended, as is her right, the annual meeting of the bishops of the Church of England. Why? Because then the Church of England had its first women bishops, who meet, whom she made a point of going to go and greet. So God bless the Queen. I like what I perceive of her sentiments. But, not just the Queen, when we're watching the crown, what are we looking for? What do we hope we will see, either on the screen or in real life? Certainly their clay feet can be reassuring in a negative way. Like when I see Tiger Woods hit a golf ball into a sand trap, I can relate to that. But I believe we're looking for something more. We are hoping to find there is genuine moral character, genuine quality of personhood deserving of high office. Isn't that what we seek in all leaders, especially at the highest echelons? I hope, indeed I pray, that beyond ideology we seek character, moral fiber, readiness to say and do what is right, namely what is best for all, using the best of one's judgment at the time. And the best for all, including those whose names will never be in the newspaper, much less the headlines. The concern we may have, the suspicion we may have about royalty, is our fear that they are so absorbed so self-congratulatory, so self-indulgent, that the sense of wider responsibility erodes if it ever existed at all. In that sense, royal families anywhere can anger and disappoint. How can we trust that they are worth emulating? Now here's a little self-indulgent personal 
aside. Some years ago, when I was in graduate school at the University of Chicago, I met Prince Charles. Prince Charles, for whatever reason that now escapes me, was visiting the University of Chicago and for reasons never explained, wanted to go to the Divinity School and have at least an hour with the students there who were Episcopalians or Anglicans. About eight of us showed up in the commons room for an hour with Prince Charles. It was good natured, stiff, a little awkward. What do we say? An English friend of mine, uh, a woman wore a large Union Jack scarf, which Charles promptly seized upon. But I came away thinking he did for at least a few minutes want to know what our worlds were all about. His questions were incessant. And I applaud that. That was a long time ago. Well, while this talk about royalty and princes and kings and queens, because today in the church's calendar is called Christ the King Sunday. It may sound very odd, but there is a certain logic to it and of course a certain tradition. This is the last Sunday of the church year. We in the church follow a slightly different calendar for our worship. Next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent, the four Sunday season that leads up to Christmas. Advent is about beginnings, just the word Advent means a coming, a forthcoming, something that is just appearing or just getting launched. That we start next Sunday with the first Sunday of the new church year, but today we're celebrating the end of the church year, and in that sense, it represents a culmination. Jesus in his glory, Jesus in his heavenly glory, depicted as a king. And as you know from having heard Bill read Matthew chapter 25, the passage really there is a parable which begins with Jesus using the phrase son of man. Son of man is a self-reference. Jesus uses the phrase son of man to speak of himself. And in this passage, he shifts very smoothly and quickly from the phrase son of man to telling the story of an imaginary king. In this case, it is clear that Jesus is comparing himself directly to the king, hence the reason this passage is often chosen for Christ the King Sunday. But in this case, it's not a happy passage at all. The king is making a severe judgment between those who have served and those who have not served. When we read it closely, it seems arbitrary, and horribly unfair. He has judged people without their realizing they were being judged. Some acquitted themselves well and are welcomed into the heavenly realms. Others did not acquit themselves well at all and they are displaced. Some are saved, some are condemned, but wait, there is more. The people are judged, either included or excluded, not because of how they serve the king, at least not directly. They are invited in or they are sent away based on how they have served people in need, the hungry, the sick, and so forth. Because the king is saying, in effect, he was that person. He was that sick person. He was that hungry person. He was the person in need. He was embodied in those who suffer. He was there, hardly in royal garb, hardly expecting a loyal subject to bow, but he was there needing aid in order to survive. 
How could they know, the people in the parable ask? It's a mighty fair question. How could they have seen the king if only he told them, I'm the king? They would have rushed to serve him. And this opens up the heart of Jesus's teaching and really the core of the Christian faith. Each human being, every person, regardless of circumstance, bears the image of God. The image may be distorted by suffering, by mistakes, by confusions, but the image is there. We cannot claim to be Christian, nor can we claim to be seeking God's blessing for ourselves without asking how we can serve those in acute aid, how we can stand with others in whatever circumstance, how we can expand our sense of being a human family, carrying the divine image, however obscured it may have become. It's why for prospective clergy such as myself, there is always a spell of intensive training in some sort of hospital situation. In my case, a four month stint as a chaplain intern at a state mental hospital in Boston, where my challenge was to work on a back ward with chronic patients and to tell myself day after day after day, these people are God's people. With all the problems, all the issues, all the things that just fretted psychiatrists and nurses, fretted to say the least, I had to say to myself day after day after day, I must be with them in whatever ideation they had going on. I must be with them because like them, I am a child of God and like me, they are children of God. That is the logic of Matthew chapter 25. So let me tell you also that, and it should be apparent from the beginning of this homily that I am an Anglophile. In a way, I wouldn't be here if I wasn't, right? But I am an Anglophile, and I studied British history in graduate school. And heck, sat at the feet of Prince Charles for an hour. But I'm an Anglophile because having studied the history of Britain abroad, and especially the Church of England, and especially the missionaries of the Church of England, I know how many people went forth to serve and never came back. Some years ago, I was on a, had a research project in East Africa and I was in Tanzania, East Africa, visiting in several dioceses and uh, was spending some time with a particularly interesting bishop in the church of Tanzania named Simon Chiwanga, now retired. He had at one time been minister of education in the country, so particularly educated, particularly lively bishop. And he took me one Sunday morning to a large confirmation service in his diocese, 125 kids confirmed, all with names like Penelope and Godfrey. I mean, if you were an Anglophile, you were, you were in heaven. Austin wants me to tell, I know the story, that I was the honored guest, the American who'd come to the middle of somewhere Tanzania. And the Mother's Union, which is like the women's group in the church, at the offertory proudly came forward with a gift for the young American who had come. The gift was a live chicken. <laughs> and the Bishop Simon and his wife Gladys just smiled and said, Bill, stand there, hold the chicken and grin. And so I did. I held the chicken and grinned and the chicken was hustled off stage. Well, after that service and a quick lunch, Bishop Simon Chiwanga said, there's something I must show you, Bill. We walked down a long path out in the middle of the countryside to an old cemetery with tombstones overgrown. But you could still read the names in most cases and the dates of birth and death. 
The tombstones all carried English names, names of Church of England missionaries, men and women, teachers, doctors, clergy. They died there, most under the age of 40, often of fever. Here, Bishop Simon said, here is English royalty. They came to give their lives to serve. May their example live forever. That's why I'm an Anglophile. Well, we don't have to go to Tanzania or give our lives in the mission field. That may not be our calling. Fair. But as Matthew chapter 25 reminds us vividly, we each have a calling as Christians to serve. And that begins with simply honoring all people. Standing with all people, particularly in their times of need, regardless of race or nationality, and in this season, I must say, regardless of political affiliation, all people are God's people, full stop. If we live this simple thought, we need not worry about our personal destiny, for we will have seen and served Christ in others. In that regard, I can really get into calling today Christ the King Sunday. And yes, we're going to go back and watch the crown as soon as we can. <laughs> but for right now, let's honor the real King, Jesus Christ, in whose presence we stand each and every day. Amen. May we stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us 
by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And on this Sunday before Thanksgiving, I want to uh, add a prayer for Thanksgiving Day. Almighty and gracious Father, we give you thanks for the fruits of the earth in their season and for the labors of those who harvest them. Make us, we pray, faithful stewards of your great bounty, for the provision of our necessities and for the relief of all who are in, in need, to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us say the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am the bread of life. They who come to me shall not hunger. They who believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless the Father draw them. And I will raise them. And I will raise them up on the last day. I am the resurrection. I am the life. They who believe in me, even if they die, they shall live forever. And I will The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. I hope you have a blessed Thanksgiving. I hope it's a safe Thanksgiving. Uh, 
So next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent. And uh, look forward to seeing you. And uh, thank you very much for being here. Bill? If you have not seen Bill's joint effort with Weston and Kate on love in the time of COVID, today's the last. Today's the last. And it's at 5 o'clock. You can see it other times, but today is going to be shown. It is fabulous and rich in thought and wonderfulness. So I give you a plug for what to do at 5 o'clock today. Thank you very much, and may I add that um, we actually, for an elaborate set of understandable reasons, we recorded today's installment yesterday, and it is with former NFL running back Tim Hightower, and I think uh, Tracy, who was there, would attest, it was, uh, Tim is a friend, and I, I, you know, I'm in his corner anyway, but he was exceptional talking about the theme of recovery and resilience and what does that mean so yes please thank you i think tracy sent out the link and it's on the it's in today's bulletin uh from five to six uh hope you'll hope you'll watch thanks so much you can watch it anytime it's not up I, it, well i don't know it'll go up at five it goes up at five and then so after five, it can be watched at any time. So we are going to do Adopt a Family again this year. And from what I understand, we've had a, a bunch of stuff that's already been taken, which is fantastic. What you see here are the, the little white pieces of paper have gifts for kids um, that attend Claude Thompson Elementary, which is near here in my apartment, because that's where my wife works. Um, so <laughs> it would be great if you could come take a look at this. If there's something that, and, and the stuff that's on here, we're talking about the kids' shirt or soccer ball. We're not talking about Xboxes or anything crazy. <laughs> I only watch one night to try to see if you can see it.